Welcome to Mac Designer YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to tell you about new developments in release 16 of Mac Designer. We've spent most of the time developing an idea by the late Professor John Rhys Jones, a friend and colleague of us all at PS Motion. This simple but ingenious improvement to chain drives completely eliminates polygonal and or chordal action. This opens up a wealth of possibilities for the development of precision chain drives. The velocity pulses and tension variations caused by successive engagements between chain rollers and sprockets can be completely avoided. So I'll start by explaining what causes polygonal action in chain drives and then discuss the concepts behind the idea and show how it can be implemented using MechDesigner. Finally, I will demonstrate exporting the special sprocket and cam to CAD so that you can see how they can be manufactured. This technology will only be available in premium version of MechDesigner. I took a quick slow motion video of my bicycle chain. I added a datum line to emphasize the chain bouncing up and down as the chain engages and disengages with the rollers. If we start by looking at the absurd case of a sprocket with four teeth, we can see from the erratic motion of the chain that this would not go well. Not only is the chain bouncing up and down, but also accelerating and decelerating in the horizontal direction. Simple trigonometry gives a formula to estimate the magnitude of the velocity pulses as a function of the number of teeth. This shows that increasing the number of teeth will reduce the pulse amplitudes in velocity, and so applications will usually have more than four teeth. A rule of thumb suggests there should never be fewer than 17 teeth for efficient power transfer, but I think it depends on the application. If we plot the chain x velocity versus sprocket angle, then we can visualize the pulses. Important to note that as the roller impacts the sprocket root, there is a step change in acceleration. Generally, an unguided vertical chain will form a catenary between two sprockets. As you can imagine, these impacts will cause undesirable vibrations, etc. Combined, these unhelpful phenomena do not improve performance. This graph shows how the pulsatile nature of chain drives is rapidly improved by increasing the number of sprocket teeth. So, for power transmission, chain drives are generally very efficient, provided there are enough teeth in the sprockets. Okay, so now I will talk about the solution to these problems. John found that there exists a transition path that the chain rollers should follow, giving a uniform velocity relationship between the rotation of the sprocket and the chain thus eliminating the pulses. If we propose that the rollers of the chain can follow some transition path onto the sprocket, then by considering continuity at position A and position C, it is possible to calculate a position B at which the transition path must start. With further development of this idea, it is possible to calculate an optimum path that the chain roller rollers must follow. So this is a mech designer model of a four tooth sprocket with link lengths of 100 mm. The blue lines represent a cam profile that guides the chain rollers around the special transition path. The first point to note is that when the chain link has two rollers on the straight section of the guide, the chain velocity is a constant one meter per second. I should add that the drive sprocket is rotating with constant angular velocity. When the chain roller enters the transition path, it starts to accelerate to the tangential velocity of a point on the sprocket's pitch circle radius. So, as there are no pulsations in velocity and no variations in tension arising from the configuration of the chain system, we have the ability to manufacture a precision chain system with very rigid links, moving with a very precise motion. Furthermore, we can apply a preload to the chain to improve precision by removing backlash. Also, unlike this model, there is no requirement for an outer profile as the chain preload will ensure that the rollers remain in contact with the inner profile. So to make this system work, the rollers need guiding around a unique special path calculated by Mech Designer. Also, we need a special sprocket profile to ensure smooth transfer of the rollers into the pro uh, sprocket route. The sprocket profile is also calculated by Mech Designer. Both these items can be exported as a step file and imported into your CAD system. Okay, that concludes this video. Thanks very much for listening to the end. If you liked it and want to watch more videos from this channel, please subscribe. 
I will be making another video showing how to design a smooth chain in MechDesigner.